Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 713. Today we're going to talk about For What Remains. And this is a new game from David Thompson published by DVG Games. Uh, David Thompson did the Undaunted Normandy series. He's also done War Chess and a couple of other games. And what this is, this is actually one of three uh, games in a series. So this is For What Remains Streets of Ruin. And there's also two other games. Uh, that they're all interchangeable and compatible. So what comes in this is two factions, uh, some map tiles, a campaign system, and so on. So all the others have two different factions, some different maps, some different campaign books, and so on. So if you get all three of them, you get six different factions, a bunch of three different campaigns, and so on, a whole mess of map tiles. And what this is, is a head-to-head -head kind of skirmish war game with a chit pull system that is a little bit different of a take on a chit pull system. In the past I've reviewed like Nuclear 68, uh, some of the lock and load games, uh, games like Star Breach, Warlords of Erewhon, and so on, that have a kind of a chit pull activation system where you put a bunch of chits in a bag and pull it and then you activate whatever team or unit uh, that that chit indicates. And you kind of go back and forth there. Uh, so let's jump down here, I'll show you the rules specifically, then I'll come back and tell you my thoughts. Okay, I'll give you kind of a general overview of the components and the different booklets and things you get in the game. Here, I've just kind of set up a random map for you here. You can see these different tiles that are out there. And you get a set of these tiles. These are double-sided tiles. And you can see they have different terrain indications there. The different movement spaces is a grid movement system. And again, they're double-sided and so on. And then you usually set out a three by three grid of these nine tiles there. And here are the different tokens that you get in the game. So on this side we have the Freeman down here in red and the Combine there in black. And some of them you can see are carrying different objective items. This one's got a little buff on it and so on. Well, let's take a look at one of these bigger ones here. So this is a mech here. This is the Inferno. And there's a couple things you can see here. So you might have multiple Infernos on your side. So this one has a little kind of nuclear icon. And then sometimes you can have one that has a skull icon. You can have two of each of the different units in, in your uh, game there. And then sometimes you might actually have a stack of them. So here you have what's called a veteran, and underneath that is a recruit, and you might also have an elite on that. So if you take kind of a leveled up uh, character or unit there, you'll have a little stack of them there. Whereas if you just take a recruit, you'll only have the one. So as these things take damage, you'll start to flip them over. So this is kind of like a damaged veteran. But if the veteran takes damage again, this is going to go away, and the stats are actually going to reduce down to what it would have been if you just pull it in as a recruit. It takes another damage there, you'll flip it over, and the final damage will remove it. And I do want to make this one quick negative comment here. This is probably the most negative thing I have to say about this game, is kind of the... Uh, well, I have some a lot of positives to say about the production, which I'll talk about more in the review, but my one negative here, you see how cut these tiles are with the art kind of shifted over funkily? there or for example this one over here you can see this little chit that you pull it's not very lined up the illustrations are kind of not very dynamic they're very kind of ugly and monotone and generally i find the board relatively ugly but i just want to show that out and just kind of make a comment about that but i'll talk more about that stuff in the review because there's a lot of other positive things to say about the overall production so we were talking about the inferno here so here you can see is the inferno stat card now you can see here we have the recruit the veteran and then the elite like I said. So when you play a match you're gonna allocate a certain number of points. We might play like a 20 point match. So if I take a veteran level Inferno that's gonna cost me five of my 20 points to recruit in the game. Whereas if I took him as a, a recruit it'd only be three. Or for example maybe we had the commander here. A recruit level commander would only cost you two points. And you can see the stats change here. So the movement value, the number of uh, grid spaces they can move, it doesn't really change here. But if you make them an elite, they can move a little bit quicker. But again, as they take damage, they're gonna to start to drop down in their effectiveness. So what are these other stats here? So you got movement, you've got the weapon range here. So how many grids they can fire away. Close combat and then range combat. So this is the number of dice they roll. And then the defense. So if there were no modifiers, and let's say the commander was attacking himself or somebody just like him, if he was doing a ranged combat, he would roll two dice, and this game uses D10s here, like so. And you would be looking at the defense of your target, so if the defense was five, if I roll above five on any of those dice, I get a hit. So it doesn't matter how many hits you get, or successes, you just get the one hit, and again, you'll flip the tile over and then remove the tile if it's already flipped. And then here, close combat, same idea there. 
And you also here have some special uh, abilities there that you can use. And so as you see you start to drop down, you start to lose your abilities. So one good example of that here is the, the medic here on the, uh, the rebel side here. So if they have um, uh, level two here, they have combat medic and med kit. So they have the kind of the combined total of everything that's, uh, that's built here. So the combat medic actually allows you to move and apply your med kit in the same action. And if you went from veteran to recruit, all you could do is apply the med kit because when you do an action with one of your units here, you just do one action. And the way that that works here is we'll take these little chits here. So we take some of the chits here uh, for the combine and one some from the rebels there. And you'll put these in this bag. Now, when you take a unit in the game, you'll take three of the chits there. So you can see here we have the medic here with the nuclear symbol. And we're going to take three of those. And we'll have those in our pool. So three chips for each unit that we're bringing to battle. And then on your turn, you're going to take uh, chips up to the number of characters you have in the field. So let's say, in this case, each side has five characters that they can bring in. I could take, if I wanted to, and put all three of my medic chits in there. And then I had two other chits if I really wanted to. And so when we start to pull them out of this bag, in that particular round, I'm going to activate my medic a whole bunch of times as these chits come out. But these will go to an exhausted pile. You just designate a little spot off to the side here. And then you won't get these back until the end of the next turn. So these chits that you use are kind of like, think of it like deck building, where you're playing cards out of your deck and then it, it takes a round or two for them to come back. So you've always got to wait around. So if you vary up, you know, the chits that are in there, you'll be able to activate more stuff. But if you really want to focus on, maybe I've got a sniper over here and I want them to get a bunch of shots off on the, one of these larger mechs, that's a little bit harder to kill because it's got higher defense. So I want to roll that much more dice against it then that's what, something you might focus in on that. But that sniper is going to be taken a round off because if you used all three of his chits, they go away. Now there's another interesting little tidbit to that chit pull thing is let's say your sniper had been killed here. They've been talk, taken off the map. Uh, when you lose a guy, you'll be able to add in this little combat chit. And this is a generic chit so that this be becomes part of your pool that you can use. So when this gets pulled, when you if you just choose to add it to the bag, you can activate any unit that you want there. And then once you use this though, this goes away and you don't get it back until you lose another guy there. And so each team has that. So everything that I've showed you is really the basic mechanics of the game. You pull the chits, you roll dice for combat, you take in any kind of terrain mod modifiers and that kind of stuff. So we're kind of the, the heart of the game and some of the other stuff that's gonna drive the interesting parts of the gameplay is gonna come out of some of these other components. So first, just quick mention about the rule book. It's pretty straightforward. One cool thing about it, it has a lot of illustrated examples for the different various parts of the game. Like I said, the game is very simple, but this is nice for highlighting some of the different aspects um, of the game. Now, the game does mention here the campaign play, which I'll have some more thoughts about in the review, but it also does solitaire play, and that's how I've been actually playing the game. So it's a one or two player game. Now, the way that this works here is you've got these two booklets here. So these are kind of nice. Uh, you've got one for each of the different factions that come in this box, and they'll talk about here the different units and so on. And they give you nice illustrated examples. For example, this guy is the rocket launcher on this particular team. And then on the other team, this guy here uses the flamethrower. Let's take a peek there. So it gives you a nice illustrated example about how it works and everything. So these are nice little booklets to have. And you also have here a campaign book, or I'm just gonna call this a scenario book here. So each of the three boxes that you can get in this game has a little backstory here. And then it comes with a few scenarios at different levels. So this one says skirmish points 10. So you'll set the map up exactly like this. And there will be other different objectives and things above and beyond just killing uh, the other guy. So typically in a game, if you kill and remove a character from the other team, that's gonna be worth one victory point, usually all the time. If you have an objective, and so there will be, depending on the scenario, or there's kind of like a default scenario where you roll and put out different objectives. If you're holding on to an objective, that counts as a point. So while you're carrying this around, you count as having a victory point. If you lose it, then you lose the point, and the other team picks it up, they'll get the point. 
So like the default game is you play to five points. So if you picked up two objectives, you'd have two points and then you just have to kill three of the other units guys. But there might be other objectives here. This one here, for example, has an EMP token you'll put in the middle. And so you wanna have a guy there at the end of the round and that will score you a point that you can accrue over time. And you can see this is a 15 point game and it goes all the way up here to a 30 point game there in the final fifth scenario. And you'll notice there's also rules here for solitaire play. And it shows you where to kind of set it up. If you set up the different uh, units, so you can play solitaire as either side. And then they'll have different things uh, that the uh, solitaire opponent will do specific to that scenario. So the other nice thing here, I showed you these cards. Here, these give you the general stats and things. But they also have different individual cards for both sides that give you sort of their solitaire sort of AI uh, template here. So what you typically do is you'll see, okay, they're either engaged which means they're you know next to each other, hand-to-hand -hand combat, they're injured, or in, they're neither, and so they, you just do the orders, and so you roll the D10 here, so let's say we roll a seven, for example. In this case, so this would be an assault. So move to the closest enemy, blah, 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 and fight them, and this is, of course, for the Inferno, so he's gonna use uh, the flamethrower, though. So they're gonna take that order and keep doing that until they get interrupted with you know being engaged or injured. Oh, excuse me, and sometimes it'll say, you know, objective, use the scenario instructions. So maybe you'll say, hey, move closer to this particular objective, which is important for the scenario. Now there's also here a couple things for um, some clarifications for each side. So here's the combine AI activation reference. You can see, oh, specifically, oh, what does it actually do when the Hellfire does this? You know, oh, maybe it'll, uh, when it uses its flamethrower, it's only gonna use it as long as it's not killing and attacking more of its own players than the others, because if you throw out a flamethrower here, you can see it covers a lot of area. Uh, and then there's an ability reference here, and this is really probably the biggest learning curve of the game. It's just kind of studying these different special abilities and seeing what they do. Because like I said, it's just move, attack, and so on for the rest of the game and get close to objectives. So each side has these different ability references and AI activation references. And then there's also this nice little uh, roster which you could photocopy and print out and keep track of that for like a campaign or something. So that's really the gist of all the rules in the game. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and jump up to my talking hand there and I'll give you kind of my review thoughts. Okay, so that's a brief overview of for what remains. Let's go ahead and jump into my three pillars of review. Well, first the player count, like I said, I only played it solitaire. You can play it one or two player games. And so the bluffing aspect, you kind of miss out on the solitaire because there's the AI component doesn't really like choose to you know put in certain chits what you do is you always shuffle up every ai uh component chips and then you'll just randomly pull them but then you'll add uh the basic difficulty the medium difficulty which is what i played on you grab two extra chits you know above the amount number of characters that they have or if you make it harder you can grab three extra and so on so they get a few more activations than you uh, but there's not really a lot of thought to it but it, it, it also can kind of like surprise you and be like wow they really activated the heck out of this guy and there's cool instances where it kind of does, it feels organic and feels sort of naturally like some, you know, clever move that it pulled off. Um, so I would like to play a two player because I like that bluffing aspect of it. I like the kind of doubling down on a particular character and then you got to take the round off and that whole thing. And I will say the AI mostly does something that makes sense at least. There are some corner cases where it's like, why would it do that? But I think it makes up for it because it gets the extra activations. And it frankly it doesn't happen that often where it's doing something you know, dumb or anything. Uh, once it kind of gets locked into a thing, then it'll kind of keep doing it until it gets you know jacked up or somebody comes into combat with it. And so um, it makes sense, Like it works really well. And you can play through kind of a campaign against the AI, but I'll talk more about the campaign thing here in a minute. So it's kind of a nice kind of narrative experience there. Now in terms of play time, the box here says 45 to 60, and I would say that's absolutely right. Uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve uh, above and beyond the core rules. The core rules are dead simple if you saw the walkthrough part of it, really simple. And the only kind of hump there is the different special abilities kind of juggling, oh, okay, I gotta make sure when they do this, you know, they have this extra ability, or you know, this, this guy will give like a plus die to all the guys around them, make sure to do that. And so just making sure you have in track all of those different keyword abilities is really the only thing. So once you kind of ingest that, then it's gonna get really snappy, and even some of the smaller scenarios you could get in under 45 minutes for sure. Um, so that's the play time there. 
Now, in terms of, you know, kind of the comparisons to other games, uh, obviously this is a lot like, you know, the other chip pull games I mentioned, uh, the lock and load games and that kind of stuff. But what sets it apart there is this kind of deck building-ish aspect to the chip pull where, you know, you might focus it on a character or spread out a variety of characters, but then you don't get access to those chips again until after your next turn. So you might have your sniper just take a bunch of shots off and then, you, you know, now they're exhausted or tired or they're kind of reloading. And so it's kind of a cool thematic aspect there. Um, so that's a cool thing. And it's one of those things where it's like, man, that is so simple. <laughs> Why did nobody else think of that? And frankly, that's what David Thompson games seem to do. It's like every time I'm playing, I'm like, oh, that's, that was simple. <laughs> how, does, how have I never seen this? So yeah, he's kind of, he's got kind of a good hallmark of, of figuring that kind of stuff out. Um, so the other thing about those, I thought, I knew, I said I would mention the campaign is the campaign is a little bit strange. Now I didn't play the campaign straight through. I kind of jumped around and played the 10, the 15 and the 25 point. And to me, it's more like a scenario setup booklet for some cool objectives, uh, but you could play through it narratively and kind of play it sequentially. And I think that's fine. It does a strange thing though, where it says you can like level up your characters from the previous game, which I, it kind of doesn't really make sense to do that because when you go from one game to the next, the point cap increases. So you could sort of take your guys with, but then why not just pull in a recruit anyway? So it's like, why is there this like leveling mechanism where the, the campaign just kind of does it for you. So to me, it's just, it's almost like slightly misleading. I mean, it's not even misleading. It's just kind of strange <laughs> because why not just take your whole pool of, uh, you know, the versatile forces that you have available to you, look at the scenario and then try to pull and do the best sort of setup that you can think of or throw some kind of random other sort of configuration of units that you think is going to be interesting you know, at the scenario and just play with that. So like you've got this whole pool of forces and then you just kind of, you know, decide who to deploy to this particular mission as the scenario progresses. I don't know, it's just strange because you can't like lose a guy. You guy can't get injured and die or anything. So the leveling up doesn't really, it's almost like you need one without the other. I don't know. <laughs> that's the only kind of strange thing, but I think as playing through it as a narrative experience, that seems like it would be a really cool thing where you just play, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And he's got the same thing kind of in an undaunted where it's just like, just play through them or pick them out and play them as you want. There doesn't really need to be any kind of leveling up or anything. That's a strange strange nitpick, really. It doesn't really matter, but you can do what you want. Um, the other thing is, so it does have some kind of narrative thing where like if, if you're playing two player anyway, if we, we're playing and then the combine wins, then in the next scenario, the combine will get some effect if they won the previous scenario. And then you just kind of play it through like that. Um, so that's cool. Now, if you play it solo, it says just don't keep playing. If you lose, just replay the scenario before until you win. And then if you don't win, you don't care, then just go on and play it as if you had marked it as you won anyway. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Um, so but yeah, to me, it's not a campaign system. It's just like, here's a kind of a narrative story and you can kind of pick up and leave off however you want, which I think is perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, this is a, I think it's a really cool system. Uh, I made kind of uh, some criticisms about the component quality and the artistic quality during the walkthrough. And I think that's unfortunate, but it kind of makes up for it in a lot of other ways with the other production qualities. There's a lot of cheat sheet cards and player aids and the nice little booklets for each of the different factions is really cool. Um, and the, uh, there's a lot of illustrated examples and it's a real simple system anyway, but I think it's gonna be a good kind of beginner game or if you had kids or something. And you can you could show them you know easily through the different rules explanations how to play. I think it's really good for that, and you can pick it up for about forty five bucks uh, online for each of the different uh, boxes. So my only real gripe with it is just some of the sort of production you know physical production aspects of it, but the general like cerebral production aspects of it are really good. And I definitely recommend folks take a look at this. It's been great to play solo. Uh, and it does present some nice uh, tactical choices. And the thing is, is like, it's cool because a lot of these chit pull games, they're soloable anyway. So even if you just want to play both sides, don't change any rules, you can take a two player chit pull game and just pull it, pull the chit for whatever side, whoever comes up and say, oh, I'm activating this unit or this team. Let me make the best decision now. And then we'll see what chit gets pulled on the next pull. And this sort of takes and twists that 
because you, if you played that with a two-player style, it wouldn't really work because then you couldn't really bluff correctly the amount of chips because you'd be knowing if there's hidden information, you can't really solo something usually. Kind of depends. But since there's hidden information in the two-player game, it doesn't work. But they've built in this cool AI activation system to kind of make up for that. So I think that's a really cool kind of achievement in terms of the design of this kind of system where there's some nice, meaty, chewy, tactical bluffing in the chip mechanism that makes that even more interesting because I really like the chip pull mechanism, but it makes it even more interesting and I really want to try a two-player. And then it kind of still stays true to the solo bullness of it with the cool AI system that they've built in. So it's a really cool little system here, and I definitely recommend folks take a look at this, especially if you're still trying to you know, keep your head down and, and play solo games, or maybe just with a partner. Uh, this is, this is going to fit your niche really well, and if you like it, and there's two other games you can get for it, and you can mix and match, you have three different campaigns and different maps and all kinds of tiles that you can put together and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's for what remains. Thanks.